Now, the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. Every game that he watches, he's just shocked at the pace of it and like how good the hockey is. And it's obviously a lot different from back when he played, and it's a lot more skilled and, and faster, I think. Yeah, I think just the whole team's mentality is trying to block out all the extra noise around us. Obviously, we do have some hype this year. I'm just trying to every day just come to the rink and stay focused on what's actually on the hand. When Michigan State's hockey team drops the puck in its season opener against Lake Superior State later today, it is also going to honor the life and legacy of former Spartan coach and athletic director Ron Mason. MSU will be dedicating the ice to Mason, and the ceremony prior to the game is shaping up to be very impressive. It's where Adam and Nightingale and I begin our first chat of the season about Mason and what he's meant to Spartan hockey all these years. All right, so when I say Ron Mason, what do you say? Legend. Yeah, I mean, he's, he is Spartan hockey. He's, uh, you know, everything he did for our, obviously our program, but just college hockey in general. We're playing Lake Superior. He started the program there, and obviously what that turned into a, a powerhouse and his time at Bowling Green. And then you look at um, just the whole college hockey landscape and where Michigan State fit into that. And, you know, then that, to take over as AD here, uh, they're pretty special. So what do you think Saturday night is going to be like when you guys dedicate the ice here at Monice Arena to him? Yeah, super excited about it. You know, I think when you look at, I even look at last year when our building started to fill up, you know, a lot of that had to do with Ron laying the foundation and building this program to, to what it, we know it can be. And we got our jobs to try to get it there. And uh, But a lot of the people that were coming to games and Ron built those relationships, they're, they're coming back now. And, and then his family's going to be back and, and a lot of people that supported him. So it'll be a special night. Who all then will be here outside of his family? I mean, what former players may be coming back? There's lots. Or? I mean, the list is like close to 300 people. Yeah, so there'll be a lot of, you know, former players, family, uh, people within the community that he's close with, um, other people within college hockey, guys that were assistant coaches for him. So we're excited about it. What else, too, does having a dedication ceremony like that mean to a program or essentially to mean to maybe some of the, the young kids that you have on your team who might not know a ton about the history of Spartan hockey. Yeah, I know I think it's really important and thankful that the university supported us in doing it, you know, and you know, that's a, we feel like we've got a really special thing here as far as our tradition, you know, and, and you, you look at our tradition within college hockey, I mean, it's right there at the top. And um, for our guys to see that, and obviously uh, Ron's fingerprints are all over this, and, and it'll be good for our guys to experience it. Is there anything that you've ever found yourself maybe um, not emulating Ron's style, or do you find yourself kind of maybe thinking to some of his coaching techniques and maybe trying to draw some of it? Yeah, I mean, I never, I never played for Ron. Got to know him very, very well, and and you know, Tom Newton had worked for him for a long time, and, and Newt has been a, a mentor of mine, and so he's he's always I, I bounce ideas off of him. You know, one of the things I think with Ron, you know, he ran it really professional. You know, when you think of Spartan hockey, I always think of it as being a professional organization, and. Um, the other thing is that he had a ton of poise behind the bench. I, I played at Lake Superior before and played against their teams and there always seemed to be a calmness with Ron and his teams and you know I think that's a really good trait for a coach you know it's, it's a, we play a really chaotic game and, and to stay calm and Ron was certainly the best at it. Yeah. As you go into this new season now obviously there's a lot of buzz, excitement, noise, preseason rankings. The guys have seemed to temper that at least when we've you know been able to speak with them about tuning out the noise. How important is that going to be as you start game one of what is a, a long season? Yeah, yeah, it is a long. We got a lot of new guys, right? So, you know, our number one job is to become a team. Like, that's our job as coaches. Is, you know, obviously there's X's and O's and tactics and all those things, but uh, you want to find the group and make it a team, and we've already started working at that. But you're right, I think that's staying disciplined on focusing on things that matter. And, um, it, you know, people's opinions will change of us throughout the year, and we want to make sure our reputation stays the same as we play hard, we play as a team. And, um, it'll be, that'll be a good test for us. You have a lot of newcomers, obviously, with 15 new guys, but how would you just describe the overall core of these players? Yeah, I, mean, I think when we, when we got a chance to kind of start piecing the, the roster together, we knew we, we wanted to get faster, we wanted to add speed to our lineup, and there's different ways, like you can skate fast and you can think the game fast, and so we wanted players that are able to play fast, and we wanted guys that were competitive, you know, and so the guys that are returning, you know, we talked about that this summer, you got to get faster, and um, we think we got a really competitive bunch, and I think just competition within the lineup is a healthy thing, you know, and making sure you have team guys that understand it's not about them, and. Um, you really need each other to, to, to maximize your potential, and so far it's been that way. 
Nash was saying that there was a lot of players over the summer uh, after they'd be on the sled bikes back there using the trash can <laughs> and kind of trying to get this, as you mentioned, getting the speed up. Yeah. So, I mean, just the rigorous conditioning schedule that you guys went through over the summer. Yeah, I mean, I think summer is an unbelievable time to pass guys in your development. You got to take advantage of it, and, and sometimes you need the, you know, the fancy machine or this and that, and all those things are important, but um, sweat's the most an important ingredient in that and you got to sweat a lot and we're a program that does sweat a lot and um, you know I thought last year the guys did a nice job of really establishing how we go about our business and I always say to our guys like being us is, isn't easy you know and um, you know no one's gonna hand you something we got to go out and earn it we got to earn more respect around college hockey and um, to see the guys commit this summer to that was pretty cool. With Trey to Augustine he is obviously one of the best freshmen in the country this year but what else makes him so unique when it comes to his position as a goaltender? Yeah, I mean, he's a low maintenance guy. I mean, you wouldn't even know he's on the team unless someone, someone told you, you know, he's just, he doesn't want special treatment. He's got a calmness about him. I, I really like that about him. And I think at that position, um, when things get chaotic and you're running around, there's a calming presence in that. And, you know, I look back at Ryan Miller, I think that was his best quality. He was a very calm and net. And it, it, his ability to kind of calm the whole bench down is, hey, I got this thing, I'll make this save. We'll get a whistle, get a breather, and, and then go back at them. So, so far we've seen that in practice. And they say too that a lot of times in hockey, you know, you're as strong as your goaltender. So, where do you think that he can take you this season? Well, I think we got we got three good goalies too. You know what I mean? And I think, but we, I do think goaltending will be a strength of ours. Our job is to really defend hard in front of them and not make it easy to get to our net. And there's certain shots where it's going to be on the goal, and you're going to have to make those saves. And we we, we think we got guys that can do that. Do you think this group has the resiliency to overcome those low moments in a season? I do, I do. Yep, I, I'm really confident in our leadership. You know, obviously Nash being the captain, but just the group around them, you know, the, the other three captains, and then even the other guys that are part of our leadership group, I think that's a strength of ours. Well, good luck come this Saturday as it all begins for you and your team. And especially enjoy the dedication ceremony too. Awesome, yeah, thank you, appreciate it. In year two behind the bench, Nightingale is bringing in 15 newcomers and one of them is one of the most decorated freshman goaltenders in the country. You'll hear from Detroit Red Wings draft pick Trey Augustine when we come back. This segment is sponsored by Spartan Dogs for Life. As we go to break, Farm Bureau Insurance invites you to register to win an exclusive private dinner with head coach Tom Izzo. Go to InsideTheGreenSweeps.com to register. They say you shouldn't. You wouldn't dare. They say you're not strong enough. Don't have the drive. Lack the inspiration. The world is full of people who will tell you what you can't do. Just say two words. I will. There are no small dreams. Begin with an idea. Start now. Dream big with MSU FCU. Federally insured by NCUA. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. When Michigan State hits the ice tonight, freshman Trey Augustine is expected to get the star in net. The South Lion native is one of the more highly touted freshman goalkeepers in the country, and he had a huge couple of months this summer before arriving in East Lansing per our Ian Cress. From your bench, he's saving another stop from Augustine. Shot up high on Augustine for Cooper Lion, and Augustine gets on top of this for the whistle. So we'll start with, with the summer you had. It was quite a good one. First, you win gold with the under-18 team, USA team in Switzerland. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. Obviously, that's kind of the pinnacle of the NTDP there. So being able to do that with some of my best friends, it was one of the best moments of my life. What was the biggest takeaway from winning gold across the country with a, a bunch of your teammates? Yeah, I mean, I kind of had a couple experiences prior where we lost. So it was kind of seeing the highs and lows, be able to kind of bounce back and win a gold medal it just it meant the world to me. Being on a stage like that, what, what, did it intimidate you or how did you handle the, those emotions of where you were at? Yeah, no, I felt ready for it. I think that's a big thing, just making sure I was prepared and ready for those moments. And obviously, just kind of the way it ended, can I run any better? A couple months later, you get drafted by your hometown Red Wings. We haven't had any Trey movement selects, at this point. Tender, Trey, I think there's Augustine. too many names available on their, on their list, guys. I think they just keep rolling it the out. Detroit so they just went the, the goalie, Trey Augustine. Augustine. Yeah, so they went to Augustine USA, right into their uh, backyard there at the U National U.S. National Team Development program. program. Really athletic. Obviously, it was super cool. I mean, I saw they had a couple picks lined up, so I thought maybe there was a chance. And then when I hear my name on the screen, it's just 
super special. And even the next couple of weeks, being to meet all the guys I grew up watching play at Joe Lucere and stuff, so just kind of a full circle moment. Hey, they got a timeline in this kid. He's going to Michigan State. Uh, goalies traditionally at least three years of college and then of course they usually don't hit till their second contract cycle like their entry level deal it takes time for these guys so this is a long play were you intimidated at all meeting steve eiserman uh no not really i met with him before the draft so i was pretty familiar with him what did you like the most about the red wings organization when you actually met them obviously you grew up a fan but when you actually got to know the inside people what was sort of the biggest takeaway yeah, I think the big thing is just all high quality people. At the end of the day, you want to be the best person you can be, so that meant a lot to me knowing that was going to be in the best interest for them. What was being with the Red Wings in the development program like for you, getting to learn from professionals at that time? Just kind of walking around the rink and seeing like Nick Lidstrom, Nick Cronwell, and the guys you grew up watching. Just super special and just trying to learn everything you can from the guys that have knowledge like that. Did you go to a lot of Red Wing games growing up at the Joe? Yeah, I did. Me and my dad used to go all the time. We used to have like our spot we went had dinner with and then like take a shuttle down to the rink. So those are some of my first hockey memories. Coming to Michigan State, obviously you have ties with Adam Nightingale. How big did that come into the, your decision to commit here? Yeah, it was a huge part. I'm obviously super comfortable with him and his coaching style, so kind of felt like the adjustment would be pretty easy and pretty smooth here. As a freshman, you just come into a major college with a team that has a lot of hype right now, the number nine team in the country. How have you handled that as a freshman? Yeah, I think just the whole team's mentality is trying to block out all the extra noise around us. Obviously, we do have some hype this year. I'm just trying to every day just come to the rink and stay focused on what's actually on at hand. When did you start get into hockey, and when did you realize that was a sport that you were pretty good at? <laughs> yeah, when I was seven or eight, my dad used to play, so he kind of had me start and get skated, and then I just kind of fell in love with it. And then even like my very first team, we always needed goalies to play, and I would just kind of volunteer and raise my hand, and just kind of fell in love with the position. Just kind of that's where I'm at today. Yeah. What do you think fans would be most impressed about with your game? Obviously, maybe people think you're a freshman; they're not sure what to expect. What do you think you can do to really impress some fans here? I think competitiveness is a huge one. Just being able to show them that I really want to win is a huge part of it. If you want to feel old, Augustine said he doesn't have any memory of the Red Wings winning the Stanley Cup in 2008. All right, we have a lot more hockey to get to, including sitting down with a player who is lucky enough to don the C on his sweater this year. We'll see you soon. This segment is sponsored by MSU Healthcare. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. It's no secret Michigan State hockey has had a complete turnaround under second year coach Adam Nightingale. Just four seasons ago, the Spartans were only able to amass seven total wins, which more than doubled last year. A lot of the players refer to this as the Nighty effect. And as our Haley Schoengart learned, for senior Nash Neenhouse, playing at a high level was not only learned at MSU, but it is in his blood. Your alternate captain last year. You're the captain now for the 2023-2024 season. When did you find out that you would be wearing the C on your jersey this year? I think it was like a month ago, Coach Nightingale called uh, the leadership group into his office and, and let us know. And, um, you know, it was obviously a big honor and uh, it comes with a lot of responsibility too. Like everyone says, pretty cliche saying, but it's true. Um, but, you know, I'm lucky to have such great like leaders around me too with the assistant captains and, um, you know, a big part of our culture is you don't need a, a letter to lead and, you know, so that, that helps a ton and it's just, uh, it's a big honor and really excited to get going. Your dad played professional hockey for 16 years. What did he say when you called him? He knows the responsibility yeah. and what it's like to be a captain on a team. So did he have any advice for you from someone who's been around the block a few times? He honestly just kept it pretty simple. He was obviously fired up for me, but, you know, he said like, don't change anything just because you're your captain. Like people want you to be there. Obviously, you're there for a reason, so you don't need to change who you are and just keep being you. Having someone who played professional hockey in your family for so long, do you have any memories of getting to see him on the ice? And did that make you want to get on the ice? Oh yeah, for sure. When I was really young, he was still playing pro. Um, so I would, I would, I remember. I have memories of going over to Port Huron, actually, which is across the border from where I live in uh, Ontario, Canada, but. We would go and uh, my mom and I would watch him and it was obviously just a cool atmosphere to be a part of. What does your dad think now, growing up with him watching hockey, when he comes to Munn Ice Arena and gets to watch you play? I mean, he's, every game that he watches, he's just shocked at the pace of it and like how good the hockey is. And 
it's obviously a lot different from back when he played and it's a lot more skilled and, and faster, I think, and he thinks as well. So, um, you know, he's so happy that my journeys can't come to Michigan State and he's so happy to be able, it's like an hour and a half drive to my house, so they come up whenever they can and, you know, they love it. Deha shoots, scores! A rocket up top! Especially with the ending last season, missing out barely on the NCAA tournament. How has that been the fuel to not only your fire, but the entire team's fire? I think just like being that close, like we could we could smell it, literally. But, and it obviously didn't end in the way we wanted it to, but I think that kind of like fueled the fire again and like our training and practicing, like doing extra and, and seeing how close we were and seeing our potential and, and now like bringing in a ton of new talent, like the sky's the limit for us. When we were setting up in here, people were saying that you guys lived in this weight room this summer. I mean, it was a crazy summer. It was uh, by far the hardest summer I've ever spent training. And, um, you know, we had a good group here and at the end of May uh, voluntarily working out. And it was something that I hadn't come to school this early before. And it was a, uh, a choice I made. And I'm happy I made that choice because, you know, we got in a ton of good workouts and skates and, um, yeah, it obviously is going to help us out in the long run. What were some of those intense workouts? Do you have one that is still like a nightmare for you? Just those assault bikes behind you there. Uh, those things, a lot of guys have been uh, leaning over the garbage can. After that, I'll say that. Something else you did in the summer, other than spending your time here at Munn, you were hitting the tennis courts yeah. with Nico. Yeah. Do, who do you emulate your game off of? I joke and say I'm like Nadal and he's like Federer because, I mean, I'm not Nadal's ethnicity, but uh, Federer's from Switzerland and he kind of plays like him a little bit, so we'd always go back and forth. Uh, we have some good matches for sure. It's a really hard mental challenge in tennis, like especially when you go down and you, you can't like think too far ahead, you just have to go play by play and I kind of emulate that in hockey too. I think Coach Nightingale mentioned just like not listening to the noise and the buzz around the program, like just going day by day. like get better in today's practice and then tomorrow you get better and then we play on Saturday you focus on the game like you don't want to look too far ahead and like oh like when's the national championship game like we we know that's what we want but you gotta you gotta love the grind of day by day. Neen House is one of the nine upperclassmen on the roster this year and up next you're going to hear from a grad transfer whose ties to MSU run deep. This segment is sponsored by Shoepan. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. Michigan State's hockey team added five players through the transfer portal this season. Among them is national champion Reed Lebster from UMass. Our Tyler Driesinga sat down with Lebster and shares how playing for the Spartans is a dream come true for him and his family. Michigan State is a place Reed Lebster and his family love deeply. In fact, over 20 members of the family have gone to MSU, including Reed's older brother, parents, and grandparents. So it should come as no surprise that after entering the transfer portal this offseason, Lebster ultimately wound up here in East Lansing. You know, I grew up coming to games, kind of always wanted to go to Michigan State. Um, ended up at UMass, but it's kind of full circle to be back here again. A Grand Rapids native, Lebster left high school a year early to play junior hockey in Des Moines, Iowa. That was probably the biggest adjustment for me was I left my senior year of high school, so that was my first time away from home. Um, and then I was there for three years, so it wasn't too difficult moving out to, to Amherst away from home because I was used to it. Amherst is the location of the University of Massachusetts. Lebster spent the past four years at UMass. He played in every game as a freshman, and as a sophomore, he helped the Minutemen rise to the very top of the college hockey world. UMass are national champions! In 2021, UMass uh, wins the national championship and does so in, in dominant fashion. I'm sure that's something that you dreamed about since you were a little kid. How did the reality compare with what you had dreamed about? I mean, it still feels pretty surreal. It was an unbelievable experience. Um, yeah, I mean, growing up, that's all you really dream of as a kid is, you know, winning something like that. Obviously, Stanley Cup, but to win a national championship in college is, you know, it still feels, it still feels surreal. What are some of the fondest memories that you have of that championship run? I guess I would say one, uh, one memory that I think about a lot is we were going in the third period and we were up 
um, I think three or four nothing at that point, and we had like a media timeout, and our coach brought us in. He's like, "You guys, you guys are going to be national champions. Like, kind of take this moment in, like, realize that, like, look around, look at all these guys, like, look what you guys have done." And at that moment, we kind of we kind of knew, and it was unbelievable. Webster battled a high ankle sprain during that national championship season, but returned just in time for the playoff run. What's the biggest thing that you learned through that time and that, that adversity? I guess just sitting in the stands, I was like, I want to be out there helping the team and, um, you know, going through adversity like that, I think, you know, you come out the, you either come out weaker, you come out stronger, and I feel like I, you know, learned from it and I was, uh, you know, came out, came out stronger on the other side. After two more years at UMass, Lebster entered the portal as a graduate transfer. Soon, Michigan State reached out, and Lebster knew it was time to come home. When I told my parents that Michigan State was talking to me, they were like, I mean, you have to come here, and they're they're very excited to be, be able to come to every game. They couldn't go to many games out at UMass, so yeah, to be close to home, root on the college that they've always loved is, is huge for them, and I'm pumped as well. As far back as he can remember, Reed Lebster dreamed of playing hockey at Michigan State University. Through years of playing in a different state and a different sweater, he developed into a national champion. But he never lost sight of that dream he had as a little kid. Now he's ready to bring his championship experience to the school he grew up rooting for. How do you view your role as a leader? Obviously you're a graduate student with championship experience and there's a certain expectation of leadership that comes with that, but at the same time, this is your first year here and this is a, a new environment to you in some respects as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm still adjusting like a lot of the new guys as well, but being an older guy, I feel like I have, you know, that experience in college hockey. So try to, you know, help out all the younger guys, like I said, as much as I can and really be a, be a leader as much as I can. Among the 20 plus members of Lebster's family who have come to MSU are his cousins Genevieve and Stephanie, who are also currently on the MSU gymnastics team. As always, we thank you for being with us and have a happy and healthy weekend. This segment is sponsored by the Lansing Sports Commission.